How are you doing, everybody? I hope you're all good this evening. It's Friday. It's the uh, 18th of November, 2022. And yeah, I'm doing a, a video tonight. It's going to comprise of a little bit of education in the terms of lake effect snow. You might be hearing a little bit about that on the news in North America over the next few days. And then I'll also be taking a look at the, uh, the weather prospects for the county of Kent in the UK this weekend. And then I'll just wrap it up with a, a quick look at the way things are looking next week so we're going to talk about lake effect snow tonight and if you're watching the news tonight you will probably hear, be hearing about it it's quite a significant thing that happens most years in north america around the lakes uh, typically around november and december when the lakes are at their warmest and, and really what happens is you start to get some really really cold air comes down from the lakes or should I say down from Canada, uh, and then that rolls over the warm lakes. So at this time of year, the lakes are still quite warm, obviously, after the summer. And as that cold air moves across from, in this case, the west towards the east, um, it forms moisture. And then as that cold air travels over the longer fetch of the water, those clouds grow bigger and bigger, snow starts to fall. And then by the time you get to the end of the lake, this is where you get your really heavy snowfall. And once this pattern sets up, so if you keep that wind in that same direction and you keep the cold air blowing, this situation can last for hours and hours and sometimes days and days. And so this is where over periods of time, the snow can accumulate and you may hear six, eight, ten feet. These are the sorts of uh, levels of snow that you can get with these events. And this is exactly what's happening at the moment over in North America. So I'm just going to go over to uh, this map now. I hope you can make it out. Um, this lake here to the south is uh, Lake Erie. And this lake here to the northeast of it is Lake Ontario. What I've done is I've overlaid the radar image and you can see these greens and blues and yellows all represent precipitation. The blues are lighter precipitation, but the greens are moderate. And then the yellow stuff and the orange are particularly heavy. Now we've mentioned the air is very, very cold. And so naturally that will be falling as snow and has been now for probably around about 20 hours, 18 to 20 hours across uh, these two lakes. And that's ever since that really cold air started to, uh, to push in. What you've got is you've got a westerly breeze and you can actually see how the showers form and then just roll on, on and on and on. So I'm going to go to Lake Ontario and just home in on some of the cams. And this is what you've got at the moment. So let's go to uh, Sackett's Harbour, um, just on the eastern shore of, of the uh, Lake Ontario. And just look at that snowfall. Look at what has been falling today. Now, if we roll this back to um, this time yesterday, no snow on the ground, you can see just how quick the situation changes. So this was overnight 16 hours ago. And then very suddenly, the snow has started to fall. And then, yeah, over the course of the day, it's just accumulated because they're getting under this streamer this snow you know this snow bomb as they call it in america and it just keeps on snowing and snowing and snowing and looking at the charts this sort of uh, weather pattern for the great lakes is probably going to be in place now until around about maybe like middle to late on sunday so some really significant areas of snow will be developing and these will be focused in the areas that are actually under the snow at the moment so areas around buffalo where you can see on the cams um, the snow falling all those sort of areas but you know interestingly you get yourself a few miles away from these lakes just a few miles and really there's very very little snow to be found just patchy snow here and there so you can see that um you know up towards hamilton absolutely nothing but then yeah just a few miles away under these snow streamers in buffalo in those areas significant amounts of snow so that's a little bit about the uh the lake effect snow and it's a very common theme in november and december when those lakes are still warm by the time you get to january and february the lakes get colder they freeze you don't get that temperature gradient and then the lake effect doesn't actually switch on so yeah the heaviest snowfalls in history have always occurred either in november or in December around the Great Lakes. Anyway, that's enough about North America. Let's come back to good old Blighty. 
and here we are at the moment so this is the situation at the moment this is called a facts chart uh, lots of fronts on it and you'll see that yeah here's the uk this little cross is where kent is and we're between weather fronts at the moment you'll see there's a ridge of high pressure that's coming up from the southwest and that's what's keeping things relatively dry in fact today has been a dry day with all of the fronts and associated with all that heavy rain that we had a day or two ago now well up to the north of uh, uh, scotland where there's been some absolutely significant amounts of rainfall I've, I've been reading reports of 60 to 80 millimeters of rain in parts of eastern scotland and there are bags and bags of severe weather warnings out at the moment so relatively dry at the moment uh, and then if we draw this map on or this is my favorite you can't do this video without uh, Ventusky you'll see where all the rain bearing fronts are so you've got a, a low pressure system in the Atlantic bringing a, a, you know, a lot of wind and rain out there we've got the rain in northern Scotland as we've mentioned there's a few showers over eastern Europe what I'm now going to show you is the uh, the temperature gradients because we're actually we're getting ever closer to uh, winter and cold air is now starting to develop certainly to our east so these are the temperatures at the moment uh, say 1900 hours on friday and here in the uk at the moment temperatures typically around about sixes sevens and eights but look just to the east and you don't have to go too far uh, maybe parts of just eastern germany where suddenly you find yourself below zero and there's some really quite cold air out towards uh, moscow russia uh, parts of the czech republic up to scandinavia and some very very cold air so just a reminder that winter is starting to bite and you know we're not that far away from it i think over the course of the next couple of days that very cold air over the east will start to get pushed back eastwards i'll just run the sequence through so this will be uh, tomorrow afternoon you'll see the cold air is still well uh, you know well into entrenched into many parts of the uh, northern and eastern europe but here in the uk we are still quite mild by the time we get to sunday that real cold air is now pushed out towards the east and i think by the early part of next week the you know, it's still cold over eastern europe but it's not quite close as it was so yeah that's a, that's a temperature profile but here in the uk temperatures still not too cold around average but certainly cooler than they have been for the uh the last few weeks and tomorrow i think we will be in single figures as a maximum now we've spoken about temperatures let's now put some weather on here so this is the gfs precipitation chart this was the 12 o'clock run today uh, this is kent so this is where we're interested in and this is the time so this was um when this was updated so that's 1500 hours that's this afternoon so that's where we need to keep an eye on the time um, if we just run the sequence through, so tonight we're we're dry, we're relatively clear. It's going to be quite a cold night. Temperatures down to around about two or three degrees in some of those rural areas, and we start tomorrow. So if we go that six o'clock or nine o'clock tomorrow morning, um, we are we're still we're dry, we're bright, sunny, rather chilly. But if you look up towards East Anglia. Uh, and towards the eastern coast of the UK, there is a band of showers. And what will happen is it's a weakening band, but it will move down across the county. I would have thought around about the middle part of the day into the early afternoon. Showers most chief, well, chiefly over northern and many eastern and central parts of the county. Perhaps not quite so many across the southwest of the county where it could be dry. But as I've mentioned, it will be a chilly day tomorrow. Temperatures struggling to get up to nine or 10 degrees. So that's a, that's the coldest we've had for quite some time in terms of daytime temperatures. Those showers will die out the way tomorrow evening. So by nine o'clock tomorrow night, that's the situation. The showers are pushed out the way. But look out towards the west as we move into the early hours of Sunday morning. There's a band of showery rain that's now pushing in across the southwest uh, of the UK, particularly Cornwall, Devon, parts of South Wales and up towards Cumbria and the western parts of Scotland. And what that will do is that will actually transfer eastwards across the UK to affect southeast England and here in Kent by Sunday morning. Um, some of the models are differing a little bit on the intensity of these showers. Some could be briefly heavy, but I'm 
pretty sure that I think by the time we get to noon or the early part of the afternoon on Sunday, those showers will be out of the way and we should have a period of fine and sunny weather for a while. However, there's a risk of a few more showers just um, skirting in from the west later on in the afternoon and into the evening. But by then it'll be dark and we shouldn't be too troubled by it. What I will now do before I bring it to a close is we'll just have a look at the weekend temperatures. So up here you see these were the maximum temperatures that we achieved today around about 12 degrees but yet you will see tomorrow we are cooler um, nine degrees as a maximum that will feel quite chilly and there will be that light northerly breeze coming through so there will be a bit of a chill tomorrow especially under some of those showers around the middle part of the day uh, that's the saturday temperature and then this is sunday the temperatures do start to recover I think we'll be up to around about 11, possibly 12 degrees again, especially in the early part of Sunday afternoon after those early showers have moved out of the way. We'll have a look at our starting temperatures. So um, tomorrow morning, quite chilly um, temperatures around about. So it shows on here around about four or five degrees, but normally you can take a couple of degrees off. So perhaps down to two or three degrees in some rural areas and on Sunday morning as well. Rather chilly before the arrival of those showers in some areas, but yeah, not too cold. And yeah, there may be the odd bit of patchy frost here and there, but nothing significant. So that's really it in a nutshell. What I will do now is I did mention that I'll give you a little snippet as to the early part of next week. Uh, and if you've enjoyed the relatively dry weather of the last couple of days, I hope that's uh, that's it. Because um, by Monday, there you go, it's another quite active area of low pressure pushing in from the uh, from the Atlantic uh, with some attendant fronts and some quite heavy rain pushing through on Monday afternoon. And then next week, looking at this, this is Tuesday, another relatively deep area of low pressure winding its showers around us. So yet showers or longer spells of rain um, for much of next week with frequent bands of rain pushing in from the Atlantic. Temperatures uh, around about average probably peaking on most days at around about 11 or 12 degrees so that's it so in summary i hope you've enjoyed the forecast i hope that um you know my little education has given you a, you know, a bit of insight as to the uh the weather situation and the lake effect snow that goes on in parts of north america it's nice to mix it up a little bit but yeah um i'll do a written forecast in the morning and maybe i'll do another one of these videos in the next couple of days but yeah Hope you've enjoyed it. Have a great weekend. Ciao for now.